thing. Welcome, everybody, to your very first Beyond the Summit World Tour match of the day, of the season, of the entire event. Man, I am so excited to be here. Uh, we're casting Zenith versus Orange, and joining me is none other than the illustrious Luminous, both of us from DotaCommentaries.com. Lumi, buddy, how you feeling? You woke it up yet? Woo! It's 5 a.m., but I'm feeling great. Uh, I got the chance to talk to you, and I'm feeling a little bit awake. We have Zenith on the Radiant, Orange on the Dire. This is going to be a best of three series for all the action. You can catch it on the stream. You can catch it on Dota TV if you have the pass. There's so many ways to support the tournament, and we hope you will do so right now. But let's get into the thick of things. Zenith on the second pick, and Orange on the first well, I'm just going to do a couple more plugs. I'm sure a couple of you have heard this already. I'll be doing it repeatedly. This tournament is being funded and funded entirely out of God's own pocket. So if you're not already aware, there is an in-game ticket available, just like the Defense, it's Ghost of Monthly Madness, all those other events. You can watch this one in the Brilliant client too. I will be broadcasting the, the broadcaster audio, um, for both for myself and my co-caster, for every match into the client, so you can hear the, cat, the commentary in there. If you want to support the event, if you want to support Gods, and hopefully have Beyond the Summit run more events in the future, then that's really the best way to support. Uh, you can also subscribe to the, the Twitch.tv channel, and that supports not only this event, but future ones as well. Uh, there's also a couple opportunities to win uh, access to the, the game. You can, there's Ten Facebook seconds. contests on Facebook.com slash Beyond the Summit TV. You can find details about that. But with all that being said, we finally have our first activity of the draft. It's a Silibear ban. Not really an... I mean, it's, it's a hero that we've seen teams run before. It's not really a super common here in the Southeast Asian scene, though. They generally favor more mobile, ganking-style heroes. Uh, and, you know, heroes that... Silibear, as strong as he is, he's not the most mobile, but he is a very strong lading hero. Uh, and Arch, perhaps a little bit concerned about that early game lady as well as the push. It's a hero we see banned now and then. Not really too much you could say about it. But, Luby, what are you expecting to see from both of these teams? I expect to see, as you say, high action, multiple laning switching, ganks, mobile heroes. Kind of a, a play style that you see a lot from teams like Mouseport. And uh, both these teams will be going, you know, guns a blazing. But going back to the Silibear, I mean, he might not be the most mobile hero, but he is very, very tanky. And if, if you have a tanky carry like that, it takes two or three people to actually gank him off. And that's enough time for Orange to get in, or whoever that picks the hero, to get enough TP support. So he is actually one of the stronger semi carries. We do see teams from time to time, MTW, use it in the European scene. A lot of Chinese teams do love it and, and do love to pick him high. But for now, he's not in the game, and uh, we're going to go back right to Zenith. Yeah, you know, it's a great point, though. A Silibear, if, if you want to try and counter that ganking style, well, one thing you can do uh, is pick some mobility of your own heroes that are escapable. But if you're not going to be escapable, then be an immovable object. And Lodger is perhaps the closest Ten thing to that. Seconds. Wow, running really low on the draft time here. I see that maybe AFK, their captain, was stepping in and out. And we're, are we really going to have a, a missed ban here? Looks like we are. They're going to miss a ban right off the bat. Uh, so Xena, uh, it looks like the captain is not here. I'm not sure if we're... Well, you know, that's what happens if you go AFK, guys. So... Uh, Zenith gonna no, be no, leaving man. an extra is... hero in the pool. Do you think it's a tactic, Louie? You think it's? A it's tactic? a tactic, man. He's he's leaving so many good heroes. I know we say that jokingly, but there are so many OP heroes in the pool, and we could rattle off, you know, Wisp, Lycanthrope, I CK, depending which team you are, uh, Rubik, depending, you know, Brewmother, Invoker, Fearon. There's so many really, really OP heroes, and if you leave them in the pool, man, everybody's gonna be playing with overpower. Five so I'm now, really glad you mentioned that. Pick. Well, one hero that we have not seen too much of is uh, a hero that did show up in It's Gosu Monthly Madness yesterday in a double Divine Rapier game. I'm not going to spoil the details of that one, uh, and I'm not going to say which match it was, but there was a Templar Assassin, and this is a hero that a lot of these teams love to run. And, well, she's actually gotten some stealth buffs in Dota 2, or not stealth, as uh, I believe Valve has commented on them uh, in the dev forums, but uh, in Dota 1, when you have Refraction up, uh, and someone attacks you, even though you don't take damage, it disables your Blink Dagger because of the way that Refraction is coded in that game. In Dota 2, it doesn't, so this is a hero that is already strong, has already seen play in Southeast Asia, and well, it just got a little bit stronger, so maybe I mean, with all the with the total lack of bans from Zenith, we're going to see pretty much every hero. Actually, Sniper gets the ban here. I think Arnish just wants to leave as many strong heroes in the pool as possible for that second set of Maybe. Picks. Maybe this is an elaborate troll being uh, concocted by both teams. Because Sniper, not exactly the common powerhouse anywhere. Not even in pub games, I might add. And I'm tapping out, making sure that Dimitri is doing his job. Making sure if uh, teams are not AFK or disconnected. It seems like they are just doing this on purpose. So we're going to... Well, 
Hope, hope, hopefully, Zenith and uh, Orange don't random five heroes. If they do, that would be very interesting as well, but, you know. <laughs> it would certainly be another way to approach the tournament, I will say that. Now, if you do yes. random in captain's mode, you don't get the extra gold, guys. This is not like all picks, so there's no strategic advantage to randoming, except maybe confusing the heck out of your opponents. I, I will say I've seen the sniper ban before. It was actually from Zenith, and the opponent they banned it against, they ended up stopping. This was a while ago in Pro Dota 2, uh, in the group stages. I, I saw a couple of questions in chat. Guys, all of the group stage matches are best out of threes, so we have a lot of matches coming your way. Today, it's Zenith versus Orange, followed up. Uh, well, we have a lot of picks coming out, but followed up by Ale versus Complexity. That'll be an 18 CT, uh, which I... Oh, I can't do the math at the top of my head right now. But that'll be in a couple of hours. So either way, we have our first picks, Lumi. Profit and then the immediate reply, Lashrak Invoker. A lot of burst damage for Zenith and Orange. Very flexible opening for them. So a couple of things are confirmed. First of all, Ice 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 is not AFK. And those uh, three random bands or non-bands are, in fact, you know, on purpose. Second thing is that this game will go very, very strongly into the mid game. I mean, Lashrak, Invoker, some of the best AOE machine there are. And if they do survive the early get go, they're going to be looking really, really strong. But you're, you're up against the Nature Prophet. You never really know what they're going to throw at you because he is capable of throwing the kitchen sink. If he could gank, he could push, and uh, he could semi carry and carry raw up late. He could support, he could do whatever the hell you want him to do. And it's so difficult to prepare a team that has a nature profit first. Oh what boy. are you doing? This oh is my what... god, push might be it. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't ban anyone because you're AFK in the drafting <laughs> stage. Uh, you know, he's for... not AFK. Uh, well, he's not AFK now. But uh, yeah, yeah, Dom, Orange gets an outrageous pushing combination here. Profit like and Chad. And Lumi, all I can say is we never see this because, well, most of these heroes are getting bad. Occasionally we'll see one or two of them slip through. Uh, but usually the teams are splitting them up. You're not getting all three on the same team. Well, we're going to see a clash in styles here. It's going to be a very push-oriented lineup for Orange uh, versus a gank teamfight lineup from Zeta. I love it. I love it. I mean, this is like playing AP mode without any bans, right? So this is going to be the most exciting Dota game. I wonder what we're going to see. Now, unfortunately, there's no really high OP support. I guess you could count Wisp. As, as one of those, Rubik could be count another, Chen could be count as uh, OP support. And I think we're going to random bans on the second stage as well. <laughs> Zenith, I have to say they have do, they're doing something that no team ever have done in a This is game, uncharted is, territory. This yes, is uncharted territory here. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen a draft with this many bans skipped. And, well, we're seeing that the just the start of the effects of that. We're not done yet, guys. And you mentioned OP supports. Well, I'm not going to say he's overpowered, but it's a hero that both scenes love, whether you're Western from the Western Hemisphere or the Eastern Hemisphere. It is the Shadow Demon, and especially when you have an Invoker as well as Lashrak. Oh, yeah. Such a good combination. If you go for that Sunstrike early on, a lot of burst damage. And you know, even as good as Orange will be a pushing in the mid game, well, they could get picked off early. They are fairly squishy and gankable. Like him, he's not the squishiest, but not very mobile or survivable until he gets that ultimate. So early on... Zenith has that killing potential, and if they get a Shadow Demon, that would really help amp it up. Yeah, I mean, Shadow Demon also very, very good against Lycanthrope. You could disrupt him, or you could disrupt your teammate, uh, depending on who, whoever, you know, benefits your team a little bit better. And of course, it combos so well, like you said, with Lishrak. So yeah, I, I think that is a pick. If he, they want to go for Crystal Maiden to get a little bit of Frostbite action against Chen Creep, that is not a bad way to go about it. Gave you a little bit more AoE to work with. So, I mean, right now, Zenith have a lot of options. But uh, the option will occur after these random bats. Yeah, you know, well, I'm, I, I'm very curious to see where Zenith goes from here. Uh, are they going to go for a hard carry, go sort of all in on the burst damage, maybe something like a Morphling? It's a little dangerous against this orange lineup, but you can't really... You're going to have a hard time stopping their push as it is. I mean, no matter how many heroes you get with spam, you, you know, even if you get a Windrunner or a Pugna, there's just so many damn creeps coming your way from orange. And, well, they have Chen creeps as well. Very difficult to bring down, as they are quite a bit more tanky than the average creep. <laughs> I bet Orange wishes they hadn't banned the low Jura now, as they could add another ridiculously good pusher to their combination of heroes. Well, I mean, they had not the first ban. I did. <laughs> right, not that they needed. They had so many other heroes. Chaos Knight is going to be the answer for Zenith. And to be honest, I like this pick. They really need some frontal tanking, and having Darkseer and Chaos Knight will really give that to you. It allows your Lashrak and Invoker to do whatever the hell they want. And to be honest, I expect Orange to go really, really far ahead, taking down Tier 1 Towers, and perhaps even taking the Tier 2 Towers. But 
I think Orange have some difficult time going up the hill unless they get a very, very fast mech as well as a pipe. How are you going to charge up a hill against a wall of replica? It is just a wall of illusion, whatever that spell is right. called. A single vacuum and a single wall, it is going to be really easy to stop this Orange push. And the question is, will Orange get significant amount of damage before that happens? Well, one thing to consider is they can sort of throw their minions at the tower. They don't have to commit the heroes necessarily, but you're completely right, Lumi. Where's the team fight initiation for Orange? Right now, they don't really have it. They could go for a Panda. Uh, you know, there are some team fight initiators on the board if they want to go for them. They banned out a great one in the Beastmaster as well as the Enigma. So again, I mean, the bands are heroes that maybe Orange would like to have, or maybe they'll just go all in with the push. You mentioned Wisp before, and I have to say, one of the best ways to deal with split pushing is to have global ganking presence, and Wisp, one of the best global gankers in the game, if not the best. We saw, we've seen the power of her in a couple of European matches. I haven't personally seen her in the Asian Ten scene. Well, we're going to be casting a lot of those games, so I'm sure we will, but I mean, Zeeth already a lot of global presence, with the, just with that Sunstrike, and... If you're able to bring in a Chaos Knight or a Lashrac, that's some easy kills. A squishy support who's not going to help you at all in getting up the high ground, but does give you a lot of pushing potential, the Witch Doctor. That's the final pick here for Orange. I love it. I love Witch Doctor as a support hero. I feel like he does not get enough love, but that Paralyzing Cask, always so annoying if it does bounce for the full eight bounces. Of course, Maledic and Death Ward is no joke. Uh, it does do quite a bit of damage, and it does add a couple more sun. It's not really reliable like a Magic Missile or Frostbite, but it's still, when it happens, it happens. Of course, the initiation is quite weak, like you mentioned. Shackle Shot is all they really have, uh, as well as Cast, sort of. And there comes the Shadow Demon, like you mentioned. Now, Shadow Demon plus Shrek is a great combo. Shadow Demon plus Chaos Knight is a very, very strong combo as well. I'm expecting Darkseid to go into jungle here. And uh, for anyone that's joining us, this is a best of three series between Zenith and Orange, and your screen is not glitching out. This is actually Zenith not banning anything because they're too cool for bans. And uh, we're going to be jumping into the game right now. I'm super excited, by the way, because, again, I've never seen anything even remotely like this. You know, Lumi and I, we thought maybe it was a troll or maybe he was just AFK, but they didn't ban anything, and he's been here for all the picks. So, guys, this is a strategy by Zenith. They wanted to leave everything in the pool and just see what happens. Uh, so we're about to find out if this new this new mode that Giraffe is going to pay off or not. This is your very first best out of three of the day for Beyond the Summit. World Tour, the day one of your action kicking off here. Orange on the dire side. I'll go ahead and introduce them, and then Lumi, you can introduce the Radiant. Ice going to be handling that Witch Doctor, playing that hard support role, headed up to the top lane. X looks like he'll be doing defensive jungling, at least he's headed that way to start playing that Chen. Smoke of the Seed already picked up. Uh, Yamate looking to be going mid, not rushing a bottle, but he does have a lot of plus stats to do some last hitting. Winter probably going to be offlaning on this Prophet. In fact, almost certainly going to. Uh, we might see a double jungle here uh, as Mushi appears to be heading into the defensive jungle. Looks like he'll be going for the early Vlads, which hey, it's no surprise here. He's playing like him. Oh, well, you talked about five smoke, smoke on Dire. Yep, and there, Five Man Smoke as well. They're looking for some action. Loda on his uh, Dark Seer, HY Tri, playing that Chaos Knight. Freedom in the position of the uh, Shadow Demon, and now Lashrak being handled by X1, here we go, Ice 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 on that Invoker, they are diving past the tier 2, and if I didn't know better, this might be a, a challenge of some sort, but you're not going to find anything, unfortunately. Well, they will find a lagging Lycanthrope, I think that is what they want. Uh -oh. well, let's, let's pick uh -oh. up the Lycan and be, oh, but the smoke has been dispelled, I think the tier 2 tower has actually spotted orange, and yep, immediate pings going on, so that was a big investment, 100 gold down the drain, not really accomplishing too much, they didn't even drop any like deep wards or anything to stop the Lycan jungle, so I wonder what they're going to do to stop the Lycan jungle, because you can't actually trade farm with them, seems like Lycan's going to go in the lane as uh, X jungling it up. Okay, we are going to have a laning Lycan here, looks like Witch Doctor will probably be pulling top, might be supporting. Uh, in the lane. We'll have to see exactly what he does. That Lycan's going to be up against the Darkseer. Pretty tough lane for Lycan, I have to say. And Darkseer will be helpful, but he's not really a dominant support in this situation. Not going to be like a Shadow Demon or Crystal Maiden uh, able to just completely shut down that Darkseer. Still pretty potent harasser, which Doctor does a very high base damage and a good attack animation. So we'll have to see, but Darkseer definitely one of the heroes that can give Lycan difficulties in lane. Meanwhile, in the middle lane, it's an Invoker going for Exhort up against a Windrunner. Pretty iconic matchup. We see a lot of this nowadays. And it could go. It definitely could go either way. Lots going to come down to this jungle action, particularly the Chen. Very curious to see where, what he'll be doing. Will he be ganky? Will he be farming? Will he be going for some early pushes? Your guess is as good as mine. I mean, the option is definitely here. If he wants to gank the mid lane, uh, Exhort Invoker, fairly easy to gank. If you want to pick up a smoke and gank between the tier 2 and tier 1 tower on the top lane and transition right into push, well, they have the stunning power from the Witch Doctor as well as whatever Chen creep. 
uh, Chen creep brings. And of course, now we have a little bit of dewarding action, and this makes the mid lane so much easier to gank. Of course, Prophet on the bot lane, if you were catching the action on the mini map, he was trying to get a little bit of pulling with Nature's Call and pull the creep wave across, but you know, Zenith doesn't want to have any of that. And now there's a big creep wave for HYHY under his tower. Gonna try to get some last hits as well as EXP. EXP he will get last hit. Well, we'll see. We'll see how that chaos damage will be helping out him. Uh, that big random damage. Yeah, Yamate taking a lot of damage in the middle lane here over against Invoker. Normally, this, oh, Sun Strike to start it up. Yamate stops in the Sun Strike. Not quite enough damage. Does force out the south though. Very close to a first blood there. Aggressive play from this Invoker. But you mentioned the Prophet on the bottom lane. And normally, Prophet, one of the best heroes for dealing with this, like a lone druid. Uh, even if you're running aggressive tri lane, he can at least get level 2 just by pulling that first wave back. Unfortunately, he's not able to, and now he's trying to camp out the rune, but being driven back by XY as well as Freedom here. Stun is going to hit Splitter at the start. Is there Edict to follow? There is. The chase is on, and Winter taking a lot of damage. Sunstrike should be coming off cooldown. It should be ready, in fact. It's available. One more Splitter. Not going to hit. If that hit, we would have seen the strong Sunstrike. Meanwhile, a skirmish for the top rune. X doing a lot of damage here to Invoker. A lot of contestment for these runes early on. I just want to say X has been playing so efficient on that Chen. He's been dewarding, he's been taking war uh, runes away, and of course he's level 2.5 right now. W one of the best ganking creep there is, so he's doing an excellent job. And if you're ever learning Chen, this might be a replay you want to check out as you get that uh, pass. But back on the bot lane, look at how well they're doing keeping down Winter. Winter has saw a creep die. That's it. That's it, that's exactly what you want to do against a long lane hero. Make sure they never get the EXP, but Winter doing a fairly good job staying alive and now will find a little bit of EXP right under his uh, protection of that tower. He will be hitting that level 2. Level 2 is so important for him now. Gives him the teleport, and if he wants to transition to top lane and then help uh -oh. out in the push, he can do that. Oh, Winter backstab from XY. He's gonna go with the split earth. It's gonna hit. Sunstrike to follow, as well as the Edict, and a 3 second stun. Winter will be your first blood. We'll have to see if they can turn it into a push, but this is what Zenith wants. They want these early kills, they have the burst damage. They want to pick off Orange before they get the levels, before the push commences. Now one thing they are trading away is a Lycan getting pretty much free farm up top. He's already up to, what is it, 20 CS as well as 9 denies. Darkseer getting what he can. This Lycan, if he wants to go for it, gonna have a very fast Vlads or Medallion. And that's gonna be a real trouble here in terms of the, the pressure coming up top. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit rough, but I feel like it still favors Zenith a little bit more. If you look at HYHY, he's got 16 creep kills, so he's not far too, falling too far behind. The difference maker here is that Darkseer is level 3.5, almost hitting level 4, and that Prophet, it's got nothing. So, yeah, I'll take that trade. You, you can look at Winter, he's like, yeah, okay, I'm not going in a bot lane anymore. Uh, I'm going to get a little bit of jungling action. And that's going to take a little bit away from Chen as well. Chen with a very low HP creep, perhaps will be setting up a gank. And Loda, half HP out of mana at this point. He's completely scoped down. Here we go. Ice coming in. Unfortunately, this is where you want a uh, Ventral Spirit which is, uh, for the Magic Missile. And Loda will be fine. Winter teleports in. He's going to use the trees to actually see Loda right now. Loda completely trapped in. He is going to be nuked down. And that's going to be a great kill. Taking a significant amount of damage. Sun Strike. Oh my god. It's just going to miss. And even the Troll Warlord survives. So yeah. Yeah, very, very strong gank for Orange. Are they going to push? And I think they will. Well, this is the power of Zenith's tri lane, though, because they have that Lashrak, that already two points in Edict. Awesome. They're going to get a tower trade. Actually, it looks like they're going to get the tower first. Yamate, meanwhile, very aggressive play mid, and Windrunner is one of the few heroes that can bully Radiant's Invoker in the lane. Uh, even if you, go for, if you go for this Exhort build, you don't have too much regen early on. We're seeing the lane be pushed a lot now. Yamate starting to sort of maintain control there. That Sunstrike narrowly missing, that's a big deal, and we're going to see the split push for, uh, for Orange convincing, looking for a trade, and Prophet Chen like it, all three in one lane. Still, the tower not taking a whole lot of damage, as the Chen creep is quite low. The power of Darkseer pulling that creep wave and then decimating it behind the protection of that tower. And of course, there's no one protecting the, top, uh, the bottom tower for Orange, and Zenith is going right at it. HYHY already 5.5, Freedom level 3, and XY level 3 as well, prioritizing on Edict, and that tower will be going down so quickly. If you look at the item build of Chaos Knight, has started out with the Helm of Iron World, that means he's going to go into Armlet. Unless he's going to go some crazy lifestyle shenanigan, I don't, I don't expect that. In any could, case, he's going to be doing a lot of damage early on. Yeah, it could be a quick armlet, could be a Helm of the Dominator, maybe looking to you know, stack some creeps. I'm going to think it will be the armlet, as they are playing a very gank-oriented lineup. Very aggressive to start. Lumi, i got to ask you, who do you think the it favors so far? We see the tower go down in the bottom lane, so in that respect, Zenith off to a decent start. Only one kill to their name, one kill for Orange. 
So I feel like Orange is weathering the early game storm here, as we see an interaction for the rune. Winter jacks the haste, and that's gonna make this invoker just a little bit sadder. But yeah, who do you who do you favor right now? I mean, right now it's definitely in the favor of Zenith. They are not only weathering the storm; they are actually fighting back harder than uh, what we expected. Uh, and of course, they're gonna be, get very strong in the mid game once the Shrak, uh, Chaos Knight, as well as Invoker get out to, get off to a prime. But right now, the question is, when will Orange decide to start pushing? I think they want level 7 Chen, they want level 7 Prophet, and they want the Medallion Shreds up on Mushi. Mushi, by the way, has a 6 minute Vlad. Generally, the timing is a 8 minute, eight minute Vlad when he's jungling, but he's, uh, well, 2 minutes faster than that. And I expect him to get some crazy, uh, uh, quick items as well after this. And the cool thing about Orange is that as they're pushing, they will have more easier access into the Roshan Pit, given that they are playing on Dire. So, as the mid game comes, it, it's gonna be really up to Orange. I, I think the game is in their hands. Um, in terms of where they want to... They're, they're in the commanding seat, is what I'm trying to say. And let's see how they're going to be commanding it. Right, they have the opportunity to set the pace here. It's going to be so hard to shut that Roshan down. But if any lineup can do it, it probably is Xenos. First of all, they have Sunstrike to scout it out. But they also have Darks here. One of the best heroes to be fighting around that pit. Uh, you throw Chaos Knight with his chasing power. Uh, the burst damage the Shadow Demon will bring to the table, as well as the Lashrak. This is a Zenith lineup that could definitely win a big engagement around Roshan. But they're going to have to. That Roshan going to be a crucial point of contention. They haven't made a move just yet. But if Orange want to, they could go for it now. Expect to see them try and get some towers knocked down. Maybe get a, a kill or two and then go for the Roshan. As just walking in nakedly is a bit dangerous. They don't really have all the items they need just yet. But they're getting them. In terms of levels, Chen already level 5. Doing quite well. Uh, he's already got two creeps available. He'll have a third soon if he wants it. Uh, and once he gets that heal, once he gets the, a couple more creeps, they could, look for the, they could look to go for that push. They could look to go for the Roshan. So I think you're completely right here. Uh, this is Orange's game to lose, although Zenith is playing well for now. They have a kill, they're getting some farm of their own. I feel like they're operating on a clock. Yeah, I, I feel like that as well. I mean, Lycanthrope is so dangerous to go up against, and it looks like we are going to have a gank on the mid lane, Invisible Freedom, and he's going to be disrupting away. Unfortunately, Witch Doctor oh, checking ice. up on the top route, and he's going to get caught out here, and Invoker getting in position. There's a Soul Catcher, Sunstrike, and a huge shot. <laughs> oh my god! Sunstrike plus, uh, well... Uh, the amplification spell, that is 50% of his health. Insane. Yeah. Yamate TPs in. Before the TP even completes, Witch Doctor goes from full to nothing. That's the burst damage of Zenith. Yep, and uh, that's what pure damage plus amplification will give you. And these guys are roaming up top. They want to set up a couple of deaths as well, but XY, he's running uphill blind and... <laughs> Probably not the best we want to go, the place you want to go against a Prophet as well as a Chen into the jungle. Perhaps they want to get a gank on the top lane, but a good lane ward that's placed down will protect Lycanthrope. Okay, and look Mushi's at this Lycanthrope, looking... Bloomy. 63 CS in 9 minutes, 7 CS a minute. From... Now some of these are jungle creeps, but the majority are actually from the lane. This is a free farm Lycan, and a lineup that already has a lot of other pushing heroes. Something we never see. I'll, I'll be very impressed if Zenith can deal with this, because it is one of the most difficult heroes to deal with in the game already. And you gave him a great start, so a lot of pressure on Zenith right now. I mean, we don't see this quite often, uh, you know, a free farm Lycan, but to be honest, we don't see a free farm Chaos Knight quite a bit. And every time we see Chaos Knight, he dies very, very quickly as he jumps in for those early game kills. HY and HY, he's got, you know, not the best, 44, but Armlet's one of those most early and most uh, gold efficient item there is. And HY, HY running in, he's got the boost, so he's sitting at 380 movement speed. The, the creeps scaring everything away, and it looks like this is going to be a tier two, a tier one push on the top lane. Zenith forcing out glyphs so far. And right now, I gotta say, at Orange, I love what they're doing. They're not, you know, immediately teleporting to making sure to defend. I think they can actually defend this, and yeah, they're forcing Zenith back, at least for now. Yeah, this is where that power, that split push comes in handy. Prophet pressuring the bottom lane. Still doesn't have the ult, really needs to pick it up as soon as possible, not only for the pushing power, but also to help slow down the push of Zenith. The one concern for this lineup of Orange is, how are they gonna take a team fight? I think they're very dependent on the levels, the items, and particularly like in getting an early BKB, so you just charge in and tank everything. Initiation on Freedom Shackle, not gonna hit. Power shot will help, and he goes down. Stun onto Witch Doctor that cast bouncy wildly. The heal not gonna be enough. Loda in the back lines, trying to do the damage. Yamate has a haste, so Loda should be dead. Most likely gonna go down. Meanwhile, on the other side of the fight, Mushi chasing HY HY, but so damn tanky with that 10 armor. Not sure Mushi can get this kill, but he's gonna try for it if he can. TP in from Shadow Demon. Sunstrike to follow, Mushi's in a lot of trouble now, Soul Catcher as well, will Mushi actually get away, disruption onto the Chaos Knight, Mushi trying to get out of there, sent back to base, not gonna be in time, 
And well, a very hectic engagement. A one for two at the end, actually favoring Zenith there. And they didn't lock down Lycan, and man, he hurts if you don't do that. Hectic engagement it is, and I gotta, I gotta be the party pooper and say, man, that team fight was won by that ward. The lane ward just scoping on every kind of reinforcement coming from Zenith, and they have perfect sight. Zenith now getting pushed, and here we go. You are asking, when is Orange gonna start the pushing? It might be now, as they want a little bit of engagement. But no, they're gonna back off as Lycanthrope and Witch Doctor just coming back alive. Now that team fight, we also saw the power of Prophet, who's basically rising away on the bot lane, getting some level six and whatnot. And he was able to join right in the team fight and help out so so much. Winter back in the jungle. He's still very very poor, considering that, that he had a slow power. start. But he's catching up, and Prophet one of the easiest here to do so. Yeah, twenty one and three, not the best CS, but he's got that level six. And well, they're finally gonna get this tier one. Pretty expensive and. When I say expensive, I'm not just talking about the fact that they, they traded away two kills for one. It's more the fact that they committed four heroes up to the top lane in that first push, three in the second. A lot of time spent there, probably about a total of ten man minutes, or player minutes, uh, in order to get that. And look what's happening in the meantime. Mushi pressuring bottom. Gonna be working on this tower. With those wolves, he can just right-click away. HYHY already has the, the armlet picked up. Four seconds done, but he's in the ultimate form. Gonna be very hard to bring Lycan down. Cold Snap to follow. They might be able to do it. Reality Rift pulls him back in. One more stun, the purge, that'll be enough. Well, it's a great lineup to lock down a hero. As mobile as Lycan is, just not mobile enough, but a little over aggressive. He pays for it. Xena's going to need a lot more of that if they want to keep these towers alive. Yeah, overestimating how fast and how survival his hero is under his true form. But to be honest, plus 65 damage for 2600 gold is armlet when it's turned on. And you got to keep in mind, HYHY will only grow in strength as he pick up more Phantasm levels as those uh, illusions will benefit fully from that armlet uh, toggle as well. So HYHY looking to be the hard carry. And to be honest, look at how little AoE the Dire team have. They have a Wrath of Nature and they have a Power Shot. That's it. That means these Phantasm Illusion will survive throughout the teamfight and do a buttload of damage. And if they have armlet, you gotta be very, very scared. I am scared for Orange right now. Yeah, you know, Those normally, crits, man. I, I was actually gonna say, I feel like the Dire might have the better late game between Lycan and Prophet. A uh, Windrunner Dees as well, but Chaos Knight, especially with this kind of start, can definitely look to carry in the late game. And if you ever get a BKB up on him, you mentioned the armlet, the damage he can do. He's pretty much immortal. Uh, this Dire Squad is no real answer for the BKB, just some right clicks from the like him. You can try and win, run away. But Libby, one thing I want to point out, you mentioned the lane ward, but look at the, these defensive wards being placed by Orange. Very afraid about the ganking pe presence of Zenith, and it's not just the kills you get when you have a ganking lineup like this, it's the threat of getting more kills, and I think right now Zenith have gotten inside of Orange's heads. They're afraid of getting picked off, looking to push this top lane, vacuum to start, and it looks like that's going to be the end of it. Well, HYHY, he wants a little bit more. He does actually cut out the trees. He sees X. Look at that one hit, two hit, and that's what <laughs> Armor gives you. Catch him for second stun. That stun strike never even came in. And now Darks here is going to be killing Chen's army. If you ever not, never really seen Chen or play Chen yourself, you know that when you lose your army, it is such a rough time. And back in the mid lane, though, XY in huge trouble. Lycan, as quickly as that Chaos Knight can kill Lycan, perhaps you can kill even faster, at least for now, as he just eats that Lashrak alive. But going back to Chen, man, he's gonna waste at least one and a half minutes, two minutes to go find those creeps again. And that means less jungle farm for his profit, less pushing power overall for his team. It's really rough when you lose your Chen and your army like that. Yeah, the Chen, again, it's not just the fact that the Chen dies, it's the fact that he has to rebuild his army. And it's not only a matter of actually walking to the camps and uh, taking over the first creeps you see, you gotta find the right creeps to be really effective. Sure, you can get a Satter Hellcaller, it's nice for pushing. Gives you that HP regen as well, but it's not an ideal creep. You really want the stuns, you want the disables, and you can't count on having them. So a big loss there. Uh, a Chen, in exchange for a support in the Lashrak. I mean, normally one support for one, I'd say it's even, but you're right. This Chen, it's a bigger cost for him when he dies, especially losing that army. Uh, so either way, it's right now, it seems like Zenith are setting the pace, controlling this game. They've knocked down all of the outer towers of Orange, and well, we expect to see some early push, but look at Zenith. They've held on to every single outer tower so far. Even the bottom tower, which took a lot of pressure, as well as the top, both of them not even in deny range yet. And when you lose these early outer towers, it makes it a lot more difficult to go for Roche and to go for pushes of your own. Because if you ever have to run, well, you can't. You don't have the you don't have the defensive net of the tower to to walk back to. You're in a lot of trouble. And this is a great lineup to punish Dyer's that overextension uh, from Zenith here. If you ever have to run from Zenith, you're in a lot of trouble. They have a great chasing lineup. I'm, I'm just so completely surprised that a team with a Lycan, a Prophet, as well as a Chen getting out pushed 
And I guess, I mean, right now the Radiant's not too bad in pushing. They have a Diabolic unit on the track right now. HY, HY, look at what he's doing right now. He's not exactly pushing, but he's playing a pushing hero, just scaring away everybody else. The two Force Spear already up here for Invoker, which, by the way, has a urn. Um, and the Assassin's Creed, good, because that looks pro. Anyways, Freedom gonna get Shackle and Power Shot up. Witch Doctor gets vacuum backwards and... Here we go, the cast bouncing, look at how annoying that will be, HY, HY, going right on Yamate, Diabolic Edict, here comes the Hand of God, will that be enough, the wall in position right on Yamate, barely survived, but no, gets picked up by the Deathling Blast, the Wolves of the Lycanthrope still working on everything, but he has to go on full retreat, as the Soul Catcher's on him, man, the team fight not even fair right now, Zenith wins that handily, but I don't think they could transition into a push, but for now, they did some big damage to the tower. Orange just cannot take a fight right now, and, well, they lack the initiation, they lack the team fight where zenith i mean look at all their disables cold snap we saw definitely blast in that fight of course he's got the sun strike as well you want to drop an ice wall i mean there's a guy could go on a lot of spells from the invoker and it's constant four second stuns for this chaos knight the very reliable beastmaster roar to work with uh spammable too and then all the disables from the the Lashrak, the shadow demon it's so many ways to lock heroes down to, to pick them off one by one and orange just can't seem to find the openings here I think they have to continue going for these split pushes. They knock down a tier 1 top. I'd like to see more of that from Orange. At least until they get up the basic items. Maybe a BKB on the light hand. There's just nobody who can take a head on fight. Yeah, I completely agree. What I also feel like that they lack is AoE. AoE is so much important to... First of all, I talked about the Phantasm Illusion that you want to be destroying from the Chaos Knight. But more crucially, you want to destroy that Creep Wave as you approach your tower. So, you know, you're not going to eat vacuum as you fight under your own tower. Power Shot simply not enough. You need something else. You need at least two more AoE. And they don't have that. And that's why they're kind of having uh, these uh, difficult times under the team fight. Windrunner is spotted and she might be in trouble. But, of course, she does, again, have good war coverage. So she's uh, baiting everybody out. Yeah, I'm going to say... Great aggressive oh, ward here. Well. I love ward. What, what, oh, we're gonna see a reality rip to start cast bolt. Actually, HY try gets fogged. Now they realize they're being backstabbed here. Ice try in the front lines, and XY is gonna be the first casualty of ward. HY HY gets sprouted up. Reality rips out. Great play by HY HY. Looks like he should be able to get away, but with that kill, they may be able to turn this into a push. Still, the split pressure coming down the bottom lane, and Boker trying to keep that push out, trying to prevent this push. And wow, Arch gets a kill. It doesn't even turn into a tower. They're actually gonna back off. It doesn't turn into anything. Lycanthrope does not have to be down in courage. He's skipping it, which, I mean, it's not a core item by definition, but he, you see a lot of players do get it because it's so good for Roshan. I don't think they even feel safe enough to go into the Rosh pit. No, Mushi just said, I just want the BKB. I need to do something to help out my team. And the question is, even when he gets his BKB, can he out-carry HYHY? Armlet, again, plus Phantasm Illusion, which get full 100% damage. Not sure, man. I really am not sure. It's a big gold lead here we have right now. Five, the over five thousand gold for Zenith, uh, as well as a decent chunk of experience. They are just dominating every phase of the game. Look at the levels on their team. Invoker already level thirteen. Darkseer level twelve. If you compare that to Orange, a lot of heroes who are behind. The Chen, the Prophet, the Witch Doctor, all of them hovering around that seven eight mark. And well, I, I completely agree with this Lycan's build. You need that BKB because who else is going to initiate? Who else can charge in? They don't have it. Yeah, and I, I, I'll tell you, Chen creeps are definitely not initiating, nor does Treons. Uh, they don't. Yeah, they don't do that. I guess Witch Doctor cast can initiate, and uh, I want to go back to the power of that cast. They they do they did do some annoyance in that team fight, but you, sometimes you just want hardcore stuns, and so far they lack that as well. So uh, unless Yamate hits the most uh, beautiful shackles in his life every time he fires it off in the, in the remaining uh, you know 20 minute of the game, they're gonna have big trouble. Orange just very much on the back foot right now. You pick a lineup like this, you start off with a Prophet Chen, uh, as well as a Light Cannon. You expect to get some towers, that Light Cannon, an absolute free farm, but he's just not finding the openings. And You have to credit Zenith, playing so aggressively, really threatening for kills, even when they're not getting them. It is the threat of that pressure that's the issue. Look at the Sentry Wards that already have been forced to place. Two Sentry Wards in the middle lane. Orange is terrified of getting picked off right now. This is a big investment, especially for a team that's already behind. Well, let me pick your brain a little bit, LD. You are actually in this position for Orange. You're supposed to have a tower lead. You don't. You're supposed to have the better carry. You don't. What do you do here? As you have two tier 2 towers left, you're down by 5,000 gore or so. What do you farm for? What do you turtle for? I think that I think they have to wait for that BKB. To me, that's the only way they have a chance. Like him might go down. In fact, he probably will. 
but at least have a hero who can run in, avoid the magical damage, try and scare off some of these squishier supports. Shackle Shot is going to lash to start on Ponytail, never go wrong, uh, but he is actually going to back off. Uh, yeah, Invoker gets gets initiated on, but Orange just can't go in. So I think the BKB is is a start. They really need more, though. I feel like they need you know, maybe a couple of four stats just to try and keep heroes out of harm's way. Yamate has one. Shackle on to HY, HY. Creep to hero. They're going to look for initiation. Cast bouncing. Pretty good bounce as well. Maledict to follow. This is the opening Mushi one, and he's got the BKB up. Working on uh, the Lakehead here, but Lakehead actually Shackle not going to ledge. Narrowly missing. Lakehead driving everyone back, but they just can't pick anyone off. And it looks like the chase might be done. The Phantasm will be brought down, but now HYHY actually misclicking. Stunning a creep. One to go for X. Uh, the cast bouncing around as well. Ice is going to be forced to TP out. The first person to actually have to abandon the fight. Uh, HYHY as well going to be forced back. So it was a Lakehead ult, a BKB charge, and they get nothing. They don't even get a kill. Yeah, they get nothing. I mean, you talked about the chasing power. They're escaping very quickly as well. Of course, they have the four staff. Surge is always there. And uh, Chaos Knight, well, I'm not sure if you heard. He's got a horse. He runs very, very fast. Zenith right back in this. And you talked about Satyr not exactly the best pushing team. Well, it gives them the AoE for counter yeah, pushing. And that's helpful. exactly what they need to chop up that Kree wave. And that's what I mean, man. You got to pick a lot of AoE to do that. And so far, they are forcing. Zenith back, they survive for now, much thanks to Prophet pressuring up top, and of course, uh, Mushi pressuring up bot. They're splitting the map up as well, but yeah, BKB apparently wasn't the answer. They, they needed a little bit more, and it's, again, I'm not sure what they could be farming for. Well, Lumi, it goes back to the early stage of this game. You pointed out almost immediately, Winner didn't get anything. He missed... He missed that first pull, and actually Winner's in a lot of trouble now. Sunstrike, as well as Cold Snap. Sunstrike is going to miss, might not need it though. Two or three more auto attacks should do the trick. Will he find them? Chen Hill Sprout and the TP out still. They force the Chen Hill. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, Mushi gets the tower, and now he's making it go in HY, HY. He hasn't used his BKB yet. He has it available, but Darkseer comes in. Vacuum, BKB is forced. He's going to TP out another BKB charge use, not getting a kill. Mushi is quickly chewing through these, and well, he's really going to be suffering in the mid game. Uh, as we saw in the last fight, he needs to chase for a while to try and get these kills. He definitely does. Again, power, sh or excuse me, the four staff, the surges, it's going to be so annoying deal, uh, deal against. But the cool thing about his second BKB usage, at least he got a tier one out tower out of that. So it's not all down the drain. It looks like they're pushing enough. They want to go into the Roche. Tier one under a little bit of pressure on the mid lane. That four out glyph. Freedom trying to get off with disruption, not able to do so. But this is buying time for the Roshan. And yes, they're going to go right in. They, they have to do something crazy like this. And the Aegis might be a start for them. Question is, who's going to get the Aegis and how are they going to be using it? Are they going to be using it for a team fight? Or are they going to actually hold it off for a tier two and even a tier three push? Time will tell. And are they even going to get this off? I think they will. Yeah, yeah it looks like they will. Zenith not in position to stop it. And well, that Prophet ult really helping. This is, you know, Arch pressuring all these lanes, pushing the back. Actually, are they going to get? Still not dead. The medallion really would be helpful. Like it's going to pick up. Still not a great situation. Shackle shot on to two. Here's the start. Power shot to follow. Like uses the ultimate, actually. Like they go. Okay, he's gonna run away from the looks of it. Cast bouncing through. Maledict onto XY, getting caught out again, and XY is just not having a fun time in these fights. Constantly getting sprouted and caught out. Another shackle shot. This one not gonna last. Power shot neither. Mushi still on the chase. Disruption. Great way to counter that light camp. Freedom continues to walk away. Looks like he should be able to escape. Loda did not use the ultimate there in the pit. It might have been an opportunity to kind of lock some heroes in, punish them for running away, but in the end, they get an Aegis, they get a kill, and they get out of there. Definitely a momentum swing, something Orange needs. Uh, it's, a, it's a start, but not sure it's enough just yet. Orange still on the back foot in terms of the map control here. Yeah, they got out there alive, and that was very, very key. Uh, they need every advantage they can get. Uh, the score looks very, very deceptively even, 8-8 eight to eight right now, but if you're pulling down the gold chart, the EXP chart is not even at all. But it's a sign of life for Orange. They're still fighting their life right now, and despite being under so much pressure, well, the drone's still up, and uh, tier 2's are still up even. And uh, we also saw the uh, really powerful ultimate from Witch Doctor in that engagement. It's only level 1 ultimate, but it's enough to drive even carry heroes away. It's uh, it's ultimate that you never really want to uh, underestimate, and I feel like most teams do. It's such a strong power uh, ultimate, and if he does get the full channel off, he can actually sort of carry. I know as odd as that sounds, but... Uh, yeah, the best, pub games a lot. the best combination is a Faceless Void and a Witch Doctor, uh, because that yep. Chronosphere locks everyone in place. Makes it easy to set up your Maldic. Uh, obviously, we're not going to see that, that this game. The great thing about it, Luby, and I'm glad you brought it up, is even if he doesn't actually get the full alt off, he forces the opponents to use something on him, uh, at least one disable, and it, it makes Witch Doctor a threat. Where otherwise, once you drop your Maledict, normally people just ignore you at this point in the game if you're that hard support. They're not going to focus you. Uh, so I like it as well in that respect.
Yep. Nature Prophet pushing up on the bot lane. They're doing a very, very good job pressuring multiple lanes. Yeah, Lucky Lycan, he's doing the same thing on the top oh, lane. But the question shackles. is, will they port back? Again, great shackles from Yamate. He's shackling, you know, Forge Spear onto Hero or Hero onto Forge Spear, and he needs to continue to delay this. Look at Mushi pressuring up top, and yeah, Prophet pushing up bot. I, yeah, they're going to draw a couple of TPs. If they didn't draw those TPs, I think they could have just traded a tier 1 mid for two tier 2s. In fact, someone have to TP on the bot lane as well. I think right now Orange playing a very smart strategical game. It looks like Teleport is going to go on the mid lane. Who are they going to focus? They want Loda. Nice vacuum destroy the trees. Loda will surge out. Very, very unfortunate for Orange as they can't pick up anything. But look at the, the uh, tower on the bot lane. Still sustaining some big damage from the siege unit. Yeah, I gotta say, looks like a miss, bit of miscommunication there. Normally you want to sprout one here and shackle him, and you get that in guaranteed shackle unless he's able to back it on time. So great reaction by Loda, helping to keep his teammate alive if he was going to be in trouble. He was prepared for that. Uh, but yeah, this is this is where Arn shines, is their ability to push both of the lanes. You mentioned the pressure on the bottom lane. Top as well was getting pushed. Both of these towers dropping low, and well, if you're not able to gank Orange, if you're not able to keep them safely on their side of the map, just a couple of fights going Arj's way, and now the constant pressure in all three lanes. This is how Arj wants to play. They really don't want to take a team fight. Even if they're ahead in items, they're much better suited for the split push. Uh, so if you're Arj, do you just continue to do this? Do you go for a smoke gank? Uh, do you think they're playing this correctly? What would you like to see out of them? I mean, the mobility and the smoke gank option is always there. You have a profit for an instant plus, plus one, and of course they have the mobility and hero. When you have a lycanthrope, when you have four staff, that is always an option. But I think you gotta just gauge how Zenith is playing. If they're staying as five, smoke gank is suddenly not an option anymore. You want to outfarm them and split the map as you've been doing. But hey, if you see Zenith, they, if they want to match farm by farm, that's when you want to go for ganks. They have some fairly squishy and gankable heroes. The Shrek is a great target. Invoker, if you could chain stun him, is a great target as well. Although Invoker is looking pretty tanky with Strength Treads, Urn, and a uh, Ultimate Orb. So maybe not that. But yeah, there's there's options for Orange, but they got to adjust. If they see the enemy team farming, you gank. If they see them uh, pushing, you farm. Um, as ironic as that sound, but you know, so far they're doing okay. Yeah, you mentioned the Invoker with the Ultimate Orb, and Scythe of Vice would be a huge pickup here. I'll uh, give you that lockdown. A lot of heroes in arms that, if you can lock them down, would be brutal to do so. Like it, of course, can't use his ult if he gets locked down. That's a big hero to be able to pick off. Also, the BKB charges are getting low. He will still run in hasted uh, speed, even if you hex him, but just disable him, preventing that right-click damage. He is the majority of Orange's damage right now. Uh, and of course, if you can ever catch out Chen before he uses his ult, the Hex would be a big pickup for Zenith. In terms of other items, there's a pipe up on the Darks here. Uh, there's a medallion on the Shadow Demon. They've had most of these items for a while. Chaos not getting close to a, a heart here. Any uh, any items that you see heroes building uh, besides that Hex or anything that you'd like to see that can make a big difference with me? Well, heart is going to be the difference maker. And I don't think they actually need any bigger items. Um, they could take the fight if they wanted to do so. The thing is, Orange doesn't want to take the fight, and they're pressuring so much. The key item for me is that Lashrax Ghost Scepter. He is going to be the primary target in all these fights. And the Ghost Scepter will keep him long enough... Uh, alive long enough to waste a lot more spells coming from orange this is a big aggressive smoke gang that you were talking about they see the enemy team splitting up to farm well they want loda and they might run into loda loda in fact now will be spotted and the question is how good those shackles are all right and well they see him right now shackle shack no shack shackle does latch oh my god to that one tree and the maldic lost the ultimate from witch doctor that was what you call finesse and Yamate pulled that one out. Meanwhile, on top of here, look at HY, HY. He's got a Shadow Blade. Somebody you, know, you don't ever see, but well, effective, I suppose. Well, one thing in the Shadow Blade, I, it's a very unusual item, but one thing it brings to the table, uh, it does help you a little bit in terms of chasing, uh, of course, because you can path through creeps. He didn't go for phase boots, uh, which we'll see some light cans do, so because he's got power treads, this uh, allows him to not worry about getting creep block. Uh, but aside from that, it also lets them push more aggressively. It's going to force these supports to buy some form of detection. And hey, if you can make supports that are already relatively poor, uh, spend even more gold awards, well, that's not a bad thing. But it's a very unusual item, I have to say. Especially because he's all of Orange's damage right now. They really don't have any follow-up. Yeah, I mean, if you relying that as escape path, escape mechanism is not too effective. You got 522 MS already. Uh, some some players and some heroes would like to use it as an initiating item, but what are you really initiating with? Right clicks? So <laughs> logically, it's not making any sense, but you know, it does give you a lot of other stuff. Damage, attack speed, which is not irrelevant, even for a Ligand. But man, you talked about, you know, quote unquote supports being poor, but look at XY, man. He, he's a high roller. He, he's got the full gem. And uh, of course, having Bracers and a Gold Scepter. You know, I gotta say. 
I gotta say, he's got the Ghost Scepter now, and they really don't have... They're really relying on magical damage, so maybe he'll be able to live, but every team fight we've watched so far, Lumi, he gets picked off. Yeah. Maybe not he the does, best person to be does. carrying this. It looks like Lola is gonna get initiated on again. Nice backing backwards. There's a wall being dropped. Emiya sent back for ice. We have a four staff out for Winter. He does, but he's slowed down and is he gonna pour it out just fine? Yes, he will. Wow. Now the Chen Creep might get picked off, and that's of course relevant again, like I pointed out earlier. But hey, Witch Doctor and Prophet still survive. And they draw three TB. Look at the top lane. Right back at it with that Shadow Blade. He's going right on HY HY. HY HY getting out carried at this point. And uh, Mushi going back for that tier two. So yeah, they're splitting the map very nicely. Orange, man, strategically superb this game. Yeah, great play. And well, you know, the Shadow Blade, the one thing it gives you is it makes it improves your ability to split push. You mentioned the damage, you mentioned the escape mechanism. It really does make it harder to gank him. Sure, he, you know, he's got the mood speed, but they have a lot of stuns. Yeah, you know, if they don't have the gem there, they don't really have a reliable way to, to see him right now. You know, try to drop Sentry Ward. Hard to stay in range of him. Dust, it's it's just another way to help them split push him. It's working out well for Mushia. We see right now, able to Shadow Blade away. HY, HY has completed the Heart of Tarras, as well as the Armlet. So damn tanky. Oh, nobody wants to fight this horse, but they're going to have to. Four seconds stun to start. No, they're going to back off. And uh, meanwhile, the push commences up top, so it's just constant uh, split pushing here from Orange. And so far, Zenith doesn't seem to have an answer, but this might be the answer. All heroes grouped up mid, five man. They're tired of the constant split pushing. They want a big team fight, and they're probably about to find one. As the top and bottom lane are not quite far enough in, they get a tier two. Will they continue pushing? Looks like they're going to back off. They want to back off for now and push out every single uh, other Crete wave. They have a pipe up. It's been up for a long, long time. Darkseid is holding on gem. Unfortunately, they don't have a mech. Shadow Demon is completing that right now. But I think the reason they went for such an aggressive push is because Invoker just picked up his uh, Cypher Vice. And that really allows you to be as aggressive as you want. That BKP charge on Lycanthrope is running out. So that, that's Hextic, as you will, is so, so effective now. Uh, but for now, they need to push out the lanes, and it's going to be rough. It's going to be somewhat annoying to do so against a Prophet as well. You know, it's actually still at 8 seconds, Lumi. He hasn't used that BKB yet. Uh, since, since those two early charges, we saw one in a big team fight. They didn't get any kills mid, and then the one to TP out bottom. He hasn't had to use it since then, and it's really a testament to the way this game has developed. They just haven't had the team fights. He, for the most part, he's been split pushing. Uh, one or two heroes come and gank him, and then he just uses that Shadow Blade and walks away. So actually, yeah, I mean, Mushi's pretty it's, healthy with that the the charges there. It's probably a testament of Shadow Blade, not how this game is going. Because <laughs> hey, why well, need a BKB if you can pop your Lothars and get the heck out? And tower's gonna get denied, which I mean the the loss of half the tower go isn't the biggest deal for Orange. It's the fact that they get a little bit more map control. They get again split push a little bit further in and force those TPs. And look at the go chart; it's dipping back to zero. And the making power of Orange is now. You know, in Prime, they're waiting for the next Aegis. It's going to come back right now. They don't have the Medallion Courage, but they have so much more war coverage. They could sneak in here with Orange uh, Mushi right now and uh, get a free kill. Look at Winter actually going for a Demon Edge here. So it looks like they want Prophet to be their backup source of damage. X in a lot of trouble, though. It looks like he might get caught off. The net is closing. Will it find him in time? No, X just magically walks away. Lota surges in. Shackle is going to latch. What a Shackle there to start the fight by Yamate. Will they get the wall off? Defensive disruption. Sunstrike flying out. Not really going to do too much. Darkseer, where is the wall? Is the question. Freedom purges on Nabushi, but he's still hasted. He does not care about that slow at all. Lota still looking for the opening. Has not dropped the wall yet. Such a chaotic team fight after a very grouped up start. Witch Doctor gets the first kill. Looks like that was Maledict, and now Ice in a lot of trouble. No, the Chen Heal keep him alive for the moment. Four step in, and now this is where the chain stun starts to factor in. Lycan BKB is down. They get one pick, they get two pickoffs, Lycan as well as the Witch Doctor. And it looks like Zenith may be poised to go high ground here. The Lycan, he has five back. They can at least force that or maybe go for Roshan. Great team fight for Zenith. It looks like a really bad start with that two hero shackle shot, but that is the power of uh, Shadow Demon. Keep him alive with that disruption. Fight's not over yet. Yamate gets hexed up. He's a uh, cold snap as well. A huge meter drops down, but he's going to get sent back home. This means Roshan will go down for sure. We see a meter TP on Prophet. Realize that he can't really go up and, and steal the Aegis. He's going to just try to make the Radiant pay as much as possible by pushing up a tier 3, but he's not going to do too much damage as well. Man, you said it. That uh, sh Shackle shot to start a team fight generally means a one team fight, but when you have four sap backwards and then a disruption, those are the power of these heroes and items, and it wins you the team fight. Lodo was able to uh, come alive, dropping out vacuum walls at the end, as well as uh, you know Surges and Iron Show. And here we go, Zenith takes up the Aegis. 
Lumi, here's I gotta my, say. Here's my concern right now for Orange is yep. they're very reliant on this Lightheads BKB to initiate a fight, but it doesn't seem like they can kill anyone during that BKB. And once it's down, what do they do? I feel like they all just die. Yeah. I mean, what they're trying to do is pick up the Darkseer before he drops off his combo and try to fight the team fight 5v4. But you can't do that reliably against the dis defensive disruption. If you go for Shadow Demon instead, again, there's four Sap and Surges to back him out as well. I feel like this is a team that you don't run your head into. As ironic as it sounds, you gotta just hope for late game. You have Profit, you have Lycanthrope. I mean, Winrun is not bad either, so oh, it's not the greatest option. Mushi is but going all in. Happened. He's going all in on the late game, the split push, the avoiding of team fights here. He's got a Yasha now. Undoubtedly will be a Manta style. Uh, just for the extra split pushy potential. Uh, it is interesting, he has an opt-in for a Necro 3. If you want to push, it's at least in the early stages, a much more cost effective pushing item. But this does give you a little bit more late game reliability. Uh, it's there's nothing amazing that Mantistyle removes. There's no silences to deal with, but it gives you one more escape mechanism, and if you're actually not an ultimate form, a little bit more mobility. Still, very unorthodox item build here for Mushi. This is not something we see at all. I mean, we don't see like that much, but what we do, Lumi, it is not this item. Definitely not. I mean, the standard item at this stage of the game is either a Soul Curious Heart or the Basher Upgrade Abyssal Blade, but none of those items really help out. It's not the fact that whether he could tank or kill quicker, it's the fact that he could never catch up and kill anything. I mean, you know, the Manta style does remove a Cold Snap. Mushi, in huge trouble, gets four Snap Hex up, backing backwards, Splitter. It's gonna miss because it's gonna be KBTP. Will he make it out? Hand of God helping him out and just barely. Wow. What? I'm gonna escape. Oh my goodness. If that vacuum didn't actually roof the stuns, he would have been dead for sure. But hey, uh, survives the tail to tail. And again, that was a very expensive gank from Zenith. That was all five players failing a gank and more pushing power coming from Orange. They're not actually in the best position, but they're holding on and they're playing so aggressively at that. Look at the creep wave constantly across the river. Yeah, all the lanes being pushed, and it's the like and the profit. But although they're pushing, I mean, you mentioned this in the draft. How does Orange go high ground? And well, that was in the drafting stage, and now we're seeing Zenith. Frankly, they played this one out pretty well. Sure, Orange just traded as best they could, but when you pick a Prophet, a, a Lycan, and a Ched, you're expecting to get early racks. You're expecting to get Roshan at 10, 15 minutes, not at 23 uh, for the first one, and they're giving up the second one. So right now, I still feel like Zenith controlling the pace and flow of this game, and Orange, I just don't know what the next step is for them. I feel like they have to catch someone out, uh, but are they going to be able to? Yamate is invis, but the gem is in the vicinity, and it looks like he will be forced back. Gem now on Loda. This is a hero that's almost impossible to kill, we saw before. So they're going to have that reliable detection, and, well, in these team fights, that Shadow Blade is not going to be too effective. Yep. And I think you're having your question answered. What Orange does is split push, annoy the hell out of Zenith, and hopefully draw some TP back. Unfortunately, I think they have to take this fight as they're approaching rapidly to the high ground. Zenith definitely have high ground capability. They have the pipe already on top of it right now. Loda in position. Base out Glyph, they still have the pipe in reserve. And there's a pipe in use. We have a wall replica as well. Great Shackle to start off, but no fall up so far. Force staff forward here, and Loda, of course, here comes the Phantasm with the arm of that tower. Life expectancy, about two seconds. Here oh, comes Reality, X. Orange gets four seconds stun. He's basically dead. Now Profit coming in from the background, can't do too much of anything. Nice Shackle against HYHY, but he has a hard no big deal. Mushi BKB, Wolf Form trying to go on Freedom. Freedom down to half HP. He's going to defend up this drop. No, he gets Hex up. He's done. HY, he's going to be in huge trouble as well. His HP is very, very low. He's going to fight it out. Does he have the Aegis? Yes, he does. Mushi Wolf Form is completely done. The Chaos Knight now back alive. The question is, are they going to chain stun him? No chain stun so far. He gets Maledict, Witch Doctor Ultimate, focusing on him. And I think Orange will hold. Man, that Rax is taking some big damage, but it's alive right now. Load the micro illusions. Focus that Rax. Focus that Rax. Load it. Yes, he has finally identified that they got the melee Rax. Meanwhile, Invoker gets off a double kill right now. He's still looking for more force spares. Still doing work, but I think the ultimate prize has been claimed. The dual lane of Rax. Man, that wall of replica doing big damage right now. Those are 140% illusions because. How's that X after finish? I'm sure a lot of people actually wanted to see those last two kills there that the Evoker picked up, but really, the Rax was the more important thing, and it was great micro. It's the power of this Aghanims on Dark Series, an item we don't see a whole lot of, but if you can get that light hand, you get so much right-click damage, and, well, the Rax melted as a result, especially with the bonus damage that you get from that Aghanim Scepter, just making the illusions even a little bit stronger. It was a great fight for Orange, it just wasn't enough, though. They lose the Rax, and Lashrak with a narrow escape here from Profit. It's an MKB, and so as a result, no reliable disable, MKB not gonna proc, no mini bash. 
Well, Shrek gets away. They did force a buyback or two. But I, I just, it's looking good for Zenith right now. And Roshan, still a couple minutes from respawning. But now with that middle racks down, as good at pushing as Arj is, I feel like they may be on the back foot here in terms of the creep equal. Yamate up top gets caught out. Wicked sick now on this invoker. So much damage with that Max Exor. Another solo kill for him. Great play all around for Zenith. And that was a beautiful solo kill. So I'll send strike to uh, to start it off with, and then you have four spirit, you four staff yourself in with a hex to follow up. Definitely blast cold snap. A wide range of spell from uh, from our invoker player picking that, up that kill. But I gotta say, pushing down the mid racks not only of course is a definite lead for your team, but it's such a strong, powerful lead against a playstyle of uh, Orange. What Orange wants to do is split push, but it's so difficult to keep the creep equilibrium in front of the enemy pace when they have a big lane of creeps on you. So I think I think this uh, split push option is slowly being taken away from Orange as well. So they got to be very careful. Mushi, by the way, just playing with fire right now. Yeah, it's going to be a lot harder to split push. Well, he uses the ult. It's a very low cooldown now. But Mushi, just no real item progression. Honestly, this is a free farm. Six minute Vlad's like it. And I mean, these yeah. are good items. They're not. They're not amazing, Lumi. I mean, we definitely see better farm on like this. Well, he has his uh, Manta right now. If he wants to pick it up. Or does he save for the buyback? You talked about how it's going to be a low that cooldown, but he, he's not going to have it for 15. And that 15 is might be important uh, for that Rax. It's going down very quickly. HYHY, he's tanking up in the front line. He gets shackled up. 3.75 of ch the chain stun, but he can't bring him down. Power of Heart, here we go. Phantasm gets used. They're going to focus on the tower. Rax going to be in huge trouble next. No Glyph as well. And Lycanthrope, where are you at, my friend? He's back in. No, he's in the front line. Because he doesn't have that Manta. He gets perched up as well. He's going to be running away. Well, his wolf form is done. And look at those illusions on that Rax. Rax is going to go down for sure. Wall gets dropped. And I, I think Orange is just getting completely overwhelmed, overran. And the Phantasm Illusions will be taking the range racks. As I say, that Mushi's going to get picked off. And this game, this team fight is really in the favor of Zenith. TP back after buyback from Mushi, but he has no wolf form. He's down to half. He's down to three quarters. He's basically going to death. No, he's going to get survived with the Shadow Blade. But now Witch Doctor dies. Windrunner dies. X is going to die as well. Yep, this game is... Uh, Oh, it's all but over. over here. X is in a lot of trouble. Two sets of racks up. Seen it's still four heroes alive. Might be able to just end the game right now. Wow, what a fight. And, well, I gotta say, it's, it's just... Zenith, Orange just can't deal with these sustained team fights. They can't get the picks during the late camp BKB, and then they just don't have any damage. They don't have anyone who can stay on the front lines. Zenith looking so strong right now. They give away a like and a chat and a prom, and they're poised to take game number one of the World Tour, of our first best of three of the day. Back you in on three, like him BKB, but there's the defensive disruption. Looks like, for the moment, Shadow Demon will be okay. Mushi forced to run away. Sprout to follow Loda. Are, is it going to be enough? Looks like, nope, not going to be enough. Tornado flies in, Yamate on the back foot. Four step in from the Invoker. Sheep to follow. Once Yamate, big dive here from the Invoker. Yamate is going to win run back. <laughs> this feels like it's only staving off the inevitable, though, as the massive army of creeps converges on the throne. Witch Doctor Ultimate canceled rather quickly, and they're down to just one outer tower. The tier 4 about to go down here. Zenith in a commanding position. What a start for them in game number one. Man, game two is going to be coming your way, and uh, we expect something amazing from Zenith. They're giving away profit, like an enchant, like you said, and they haven't banned anything. That's the other forgotten factor for anyone that just joined us. Yes, Zenith did not ban at all. They just basically waited for the time to clock through. Uh, and, and again, look at how commanding they are. And they are definitely in the stage of the game as we see a whole bunch of kills being exchanged. And nice of uh, Sprout against. Dark Seer, but Dark Seer is so tanky. He's got a gold scepter for himself as well. Nice Shackle, not gonna lash though. Um, and he's gonna just run out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the ancient Lumi, the ancient is dying here. They want a couple kills before it's all said and done. They're not gonna get it. Winter gets brought back in. He's gonna go down along with a bunch of his compatriots. The throne dies. The creeps in the end. The MVP of this one, guys. That was only game number one. This is a best out of three. All group stage matches are. But Zenith take it, and man. Lumi, I gotta say, Zenith is looking very strong. If there were any questions about who's the top dog in Singapore, well, Zenith is certainly making a case for it. Game 1 goes to Zenith, 21-17, to your final score. Don't go anywhere, everybody. We'll be coming back very soon with game number 2 of this best out of 3, Zenith versus Arch.